Good afternoon, friends, and welcome to St. Mary Parish. We are so happy to have you with us this afternoon as we celebrate the 12th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Registration for faith formation classes for the upcoming school year begins on July 1st and runs through August 4th. Starting on July 1st, there will be a link on the collaborative website for you to use for signups. Any uncompleted e-learning work from the previous year must be completed for you to be eligible to access the coming year. Catechists are also needed for the upcoming faith formation classes. You can contact the faith formation office if that's something that you would like to contribute to. Next weekend, June 29th and 30th, there will be a second collection to benefit the work of our collaborative St. Vincent de Paul Society. Your donations will benefit those in need in our local communities. And as always, your generosity to these second collections is greatly appreciated. We remember in a special way at this Mass, Raymond Belleville. Our gathering hymn this afternoon is number 455, O God, Our Help in Ages Past. Our celebrant is Father Jack, along with Deacon Kevin Wynn. If you'll please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with, with your spirit. spirit. To prepare ourselves this evening to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first pause and call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have, have mercy. mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us all to everlasting life. Amen.
Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may always revere and love your holy name, for you never deprive of your guidance those you set firm on the foundation of your love through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Job. The Lord addressed Job out of the storm and said, Who shut within doors the sea when it burst forth from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling bands? When I set limits for it, and fastened the bar of its door and said, Thus far shall you come, but no farther. And here shall your proud waves be stilled. The word of the Lord. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, 
The love of Christ impels us once we have come to the conviction that one died for all. Therefore, all have died. He indeed died for all, so that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. Consequently, from now on, we regret no one according to the flesh. Even if we once knew Christ according to the flesh, yet now we know him so no longer. So whoever is in Christ is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, new things have come. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. On that day, as evening drew on, Jesus said to his disciples, Let us cross to the other side. Leaving the crowd, they took Jesus with them in a boat just as he was. And other boats were with him. A violent squall came up and waves were breaking over the boat so that it was already filling up. Jesus was in the stern asleep on a cushion. They woke him. They woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? He woke up rebuked the wind, and said to the sea, Quiet, be still. The wind ceased, and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you terrified? Do you not yet have faith? They were filled with great awe and said to one another, Who then is this whom even the wind and sea obey? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Lord Jesus Christ. One of the questions that the Gospel of St. Mark helps us understand is, who is this Jesus? In fact, In the very first line, in the very first chapter of his gospel, he introduces this thought, this idea, this searching. It says, pointedly, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. There it is, the Son of God. Who is this Jesus? The Son of God. 
We could spend an entire lifetime contemplating that and never really understand the fullness of that truth. Today, we heard the very familiar story about Jesus calming a storm on the sea. In scripture, we hear about storms. They invoke that place of chaos. I think, I think that we can each relate to storms because all of us have storms in our lives, right? We all have storms. Jesus took his disciples with him by boat, as he is, and crossed to the other side. They went to a new region. Well, underway, scripture tells us that they encountered a violent storm and were taking on water. They thought they were going to die. They were scared. A point to remember, though, these are men, fishermen, who were familiar with being on the water. And they had Jesus in the boat with them to boot. And they still thought they were going to die. <clears throat> they turned to Jesus, and that's good. They found him asleep during this storm and said, don't you care? We're perishing. You can see that happening, too. Jesus, come on. Would you please? We're dying here. Help us out. They doubted. Their face, their faith was weak. They were freaking out. Jesus spoke. He said, quiet. Be still. And there was a great calm. He didn't even speak to them. He rebuked the wind and the sea, showing the mighty awesome power of the word of God himself. He said to them, why are you scared, guys? Do you not yet have faith? As if to say, are you kidding me? It's me, Jesus. I'm right here with you. Everything's going to be okay. How often? How often is it the same in our own lives? As each of us journey through this life, we too, we too ex uh, encounter unexpected and violent storms that can be devastating, right? And they range everywhere from the simple to the complex. So, what is it? What are the storms in your life right now? The storms that need the mighty power of Jesus to be calmed. Is it maybe a family member who's drifted away from the faith? Or a strained or broken relationship that you may be in? Pressures at work? Are there financial, financial issues that just don't allow you to be easy? Are there health issues? If it's not us, typically, it's one of our family members or friends. What about a death unexpectedly that's hard to swallow? Is it an addiction? Is it a feeling of loneliness, depression, despair, anxiety, when we think we have nowhere to go? When we look at our lives in Christ? Is it a certain sin in our lives that just controls us and we can't, we can't rid, rid ourselves of it? The list goes on, right? It goes on, and they come to each of us in all sorts of different ways. I think it's probably reasonable during that those times that we too may think that Jesus is asleep in the stern, removed or absent from the situation, seemingly uncaring that we're dying out here. That perpetual that perpetual and lifelong question as we go through our lives, why do bad things happen to good people? In those situations, we can be blinded and paralyzed by them. We don't necessarily possess the humility, ability, or maybe even the willingness to just turn around. Just turn around and see that Jesus is right there in the middle of our storms with us. He's in the boat. The good news of the gospel is Jesus is in the boat. There's never a moment in our lives that he separates himself from us. In those highlight moments of our lives and even in our worst sin, Christ is there. 
He's waiting. Turn around. Just turn around. Yes, physically, but spiritually too. Turn to Jesus. He's always right there. And as we make that change, as we make that turn, as we experience that metanoia, that conversion in our lives, that, that, that we change the course of our lives, where we rely on Jesus instead of ourselves, he will certainly, he will certainly change our lives. That doesn't mean, that does not mean that we will not experience storms in our lives. Jesus said, if you want to be my disciples, you must take up your cross daily and follow me. He's telling us, just because I'm in your life, and praise be to God for that, it doesn't mean sunshine and lollipops without suffering, without storms, no. But the comfort and the calm come from knowing with certainty that our Lord is right smack dab in the middle of it with us. He'll lead us, if we let him, into a deeper relationship with him into a deeper life of love, of trust, and of faith in him alone who can calm any raging storms of our lives. This past fall, I went on my uh, annual retreat and um, I went to Scranton, Pennsylvania to this priest. Uh, he's 96 years old, simply one of the most holy people I know. And it's kinda, it was kind of um, awkward the first time I started to go to retreat this guy. He, he's, he's that... Um, contemplative when you ask him a question he certainly takes a second or so um, before he'll answer he's clearly praying about about this situation and so so we're I'm halfway through the treat I've got, actually only have like one more day to go and um, and I started talking to him I said Monsignor I said listen what do you think that I should do about this or what do you think that I should do about that and he, he pauses for a moment, and I'm waiting for this great answer. He's going to solve these problems. And, and he looks at me, and he says, Deacon, he said, do you even trust God? And I said, really? <laughs> That's a big question. I wish we covered that beginning of the week. I said, uh, I said, what do you mean? He said, listen to yourself. He said, you're trying to do all these things, and you haven't even brought God into the picture, into the middle of this storm. Now, of course I trust God, but he made a great point. When we try to do things on our own, we can certainly fail miserably, but absolutely not be as successful as if we brought Christ into the center of it. And so he had me praying about trust and, and, and reminded me that without God, I can do nothing. And and I can't, but he can, if we allow him. I can't, you can't, he can. The choice is ours. I don't know what your own individual storms look like right now, but Jesus does. And he's waiting for us. He's waiting for you to turn to him in trust and in faith. And as we turn our eyes to him, our hearts will certainly follow and we will find Jesus. We'll find him waiting for us to reach out to him and to depend on him. We'll be able to recognize him. As men and women prayer of prayer, we'll be able to recognize him because we're accustomed to hearing his voice. Always go to scripture, you hear me say it all the time. We'll be able to recognize his presence in our life through his word. You, the body of Christ, will be able to recognize him in each other. Because our life as disciples in Christ is a team sport. We can't do it on our own. And we are the body of Christ so we can see Christ in each other. And then, most especially, we can recognize him in the most holy Eucharist when he comes to us, body, blood, soul, and divinity, to feed us, to nurture us, to strengthen us in those times of doubt. Through these things, we'll be able to both see and understand clearly 
the action of God in our lives. We'll be able to both ask the question and answer the question of the disciples. Who then is this? Who then is this Jesus that even the wind and the sea obey? The answer, of course, the answer, of course, God's answer to any and all of our storms, big or small, is Jesus. It's absolutely that simple. The answer is Christ. If we remain united to him, if we understand that he's right there in the boat with us, right there in your boat and right there in my boat, everything's going to be okay. Turn to him. Trust in him in all things and sleep well. God bless you. Please stand. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one, holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. And as we gather this evening with faith and confidence, let us bring all of our prayers, needs, and intentions and place them before our loving Father. For the church, that by God's grace, we may live as new creations, no longer living for ourselves, but for Christ, let us pray to the Lord. For a deepening of our faith, that God will always draw us into a deeper friendship so that we may grow in our ability to rely on God in every circumstance, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For a calming of the storm in our lives, that God will sustain us through the challenges of each day and give us the courage to make decisions and enduring hope when we cannot foresee tomorrow, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For, feed, for freedom from fear, that Jesus will lead us from fear and fear and worry to the trust of discipleship through the words of Scripture, let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. For fidelity to those who whom we are committed, that we may be faithful to our spouses, children, community members, friends, and faith community, encouraging and supporting one another along life's journey. Let us pray to the Lord. And for Raymond Belleville, whom we remember in a special way at this Eucharist, let us pray to the Lord. And for the intentions that each of you hold in the depth of your own hearts, Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Loving Father, we ask you to receive the prayers we place before you this day. We make them now as always in the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior forever and ever. Amen. Our offering song today is number 465, Be Still and Know That I Am God, 465. Chosen one to whom my love I give. 
Pray now that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice in your hands for the the praise praise and glory of his his name, name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation, of, of conciliation and praise, and grant that, cleansed by its action, we may make an offering of a heart pleasing to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift. Since our prayers adds nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you. And with joy we proclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim you death, O oh Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life in the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Sean, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. 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 Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word in my soul shall be.
Our communion song today, number 439, Be Not Afraid. But you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far in safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak your words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see.
Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. You know, Father Caldi is, uh, is away for a, for a wedding, so I, I, I was at the 4 o'clock Mass at St. Joe's today, and I actually had the deacon with me at both those Masses. I was told after I was leaving the floor that uh, I'm sure you know by now that that man that was missing was found. Uh, yeah, they, they, he, he had passed away. And so I, I heard that after Mass. I don't have a lot of details, uh, but I've had someone here and someone at St. Joe's ask me to keep him and his family in our prayers. So I pray for him during Mass. So if, if you can just maybe keep uh, him, and I know it's very difficult in the family, keep them in your prayers. Uh, a lot of people have been praying and looking for him. And so at least they, they, that's come to a conclusion they've found him. So uh, just keep him in, in, in your prayers, please. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Proclaim the gospel with your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our final hymn together today, number 207, Holy, 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 207. Mm -hmm. 